Hi, welcome to my SQL YAG testimonial webcast. My name's Jim Salmons and I'm an independent developer in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, USA. I can honestly say that SQL YAG is the only tool in my developer's toolkit that has shaped my personal workflow style so that I am more efficient, more organized, and less stressed. In this webcast, I want to showcase the workflow style that I've developed that depends on SQL YAG and hope that you'll have a sense of how this could help you in your work. I'm just a guy. I have no computer science training, but I've been involved in the microcomputer software industry since its beginning. I've probably been a small talk uh, designer developer for my professional career longer than many viewers have even been alive. I left the corporate road warrior life along with my wife uh, in the late 90s and together we haven't looked back as we've gotten involved in rural economic development and microenterprise development. My work's mostly a mix of small business contract projects and portfolio life personal business ventures. I'm left-handed and right-brained. It basically means I can't do test-driven design or anything that would be similarly, shall we say, rigorous. Uh, um, if I would characterize my development methodology, I'm uh, perpetually heading down the road and around the bend, mapping as I go along. Um, there are a handful of features in SQL YAG that absolutely fit perfectly with this style of iterative development. I work in a WAMP lamp uh, world. Windows is my development environment. Um, various versions of Linux are, are my public servers. Um, I work almost exclusively in the Drupal uh, content management system with uh, Ubercard as my e-commerce um, uh, framework. Amazing systems and like most modern content management systems, they share a common context that shapes how we do our development. Uh, you, of course, you've got your code and your modules and JavaScript libs and everything, um, but also your database is basically where you have not only your content data, but <clears throat> the function of your system is also um, living in the configuration data that's in your database. And this creates that, that challenge for you to keep things in sync as you move your code forward, um, but you still have to preserve integrity of your, of your data. So a day in the life of, of uh, my work that involves SQL YAG, I get up, I get out of bed, um, drag the comb across my head, and I've got to uh, sit down and, and start to work. So any project that I have, um, of course, I have mirror of the project database on my local sandbox uh, from my public server, but I also have two full copies of of that database, one underscore dev, one underscore rem or remote. So I've got my development and remote. The first step any day I uh, start out work is I grab a copy of the public facing um, database so that I'm always working as close to possible with a live um, system. Uh, copy it uh, takes a minute or two with um, SQL YAG um, and before I uh, go live and work in my sandbox, I take the day before's database, copy it up to my, my dev box, uh, dev database, and then I take the one that I've just pulled down from the public server and put it onto my live sandbox. In step two, uh, for the remainder of the day, I'm just doing work in an iterative style. Now, of course, as you do these kinds of, of iterative development, you're going to do a couple of things. You're going to introduce tainted uh, content data, and there's going to be configuration changes. Those can be configuration changes in, in your database data. They can also be schema changes to your database as you write custom modules, et cetera. So in the course of the day, I'm constantly using SQL YAH um, fine grain tools for fast copying of tables between my, my live and, and dev copy that I want to keep uh, up to date. I also occasionally screw things up and get tainted data, and I don't want to work against tainted data, so I'll uh, take my dev copy and blast it back up to the live one and, and get a kind of a redo thing going. 
The most spaghetti-like and seemingly complex step is the one that I do at the end of the day before uh, to go live back on uh, the public server with my uh, work for the day. Um, it looks complicated, but really it's just a kind of, of uh, uh, extra careful um, redoing of step one uh, and two. Uh, before I do that, I put um, to do this uh, last step, I put my uh, website in offline maintenance mode and I grab the copy of the, the latest and greatest um, public database down to my REM database. I take a copy of today's sandbox database, stick it up in, in my dev uh, database in case I have to kind of screw things up and, and step back a moment. And then I said about taking, uh, and I use the SQL Yogs really excellent features, this schema synchronization wizard and the data database uh, synchronization wi wizards. And I get my uh, the stuff that I've done in my sandbox uh, folded back up into that database that's sitting in my REM uh, copy of the database. And when I feel I've got everything right there, then I take my REM database, copy it down onto my live sandbox database. I do some testing, I make sure everything's right, and then I take uh, my last step uh, before I get to take rest for the end of the day, I copy that live sandbox database in whole right up um, to online and take the site um, back online. So that's my three-step uh, daily development cycle. SQL YOG, and I want to emphasize this, SQL YOG didn't fit into my way of doing things. Th this is a workflow that over the years of, of doing websites and, and having SQL YOG as a, a tool in my tool uh, kit, this is a case where the tool features and its performance have shaped how I work. Every day I depend on SQL Yog's superior high performance whole database and table copying, its flexible schema synchronization, and its fine grained and job scriptable database synchronization uh, capabilities. So thank you, uh, Web Yog folks. You guys rock, your products rock, and I look forward to using them for years to come.